Welcome to Electron Line. You may have stumbled upon a picture that looks exactly like this, and on the caption would probably say the Milky Way Galaxy. But then you wonder, well, how can we take a picture of the Milky Way Galaxy if we live right inside of the galaxy? What are we actually looking at? And it turns out it's actually a 360 degree uh, panoramic view of our galaxy. In other words, let's see, we're right here. This is again the general structure of the galaxy. If we have like a cutaway view, we have the central bulge, we have the galactic disk. Here we are, here's the sun about 28,000 light years away from the center of the galaxy. And so what will we see if we look in the direction of the disk of the galaxy because we live right inside the disk. Well, it turns out when we look at the sky, we sometimes see this band of light on a clear night when there's not too many city lights around or there's not a full moon around. We see this band of light in the sky and that's called the Milky Way. And what we're actually doing here is we're looking along the disk of the galaxy. So the disk kind of goes across the sky all the way around, all the way 180 degrees across the sky from any point on the Earth you can see the Milky Way disk. And so what's happening is we're looking in the direction of the disk. Now if we look in this direction away from the galactic bulge we see this kind of thing. In other words we don't see too many dust lanes and nebulas. We see more stars in that direction and they're not as dense. We don't see as much light coming from here. But yes if you look carefully there's still plenty of nebulas, plenty of dust lanes, just not as obscuring as when we start looking in the opposite direction. So when we come around we start looking in this direction, we see more and more of the galactic disk and more of the dust lanes. And then when we turn completely around in the other direction, we're looking now towards the center of the galaxy. But the center of the galaxy is simply not visible because it's completely blocked by all the nebulas that are in our way. So when we go from left to right, we're simply turning around. So here we're looking away from the center. At this point, we're looking towards the center. And then when we get all the way to the other side, we're again looking in the same direction as before. So we're essentially turning 360 degrees or completely around as we're observing the galactic disk around us. And that's what this picture represents. So then we take all these pictures and we put them all together. We see this singular view of the entire galaxy. Now, when you look at the very center, you can see that you don't see the center galaxy. It's completely blocked by these dust lanes. But then we look a little bit above or below it. In other words, when we look in this direction or we look down in this direction, we see the glow of these enormous quantities of stars that are in the galactic bulge. So we can see the glow of the stars in that direction. We look high enough or low enough. But if we're directly at the center, looking at, towards a black hole in Sagittarius A, we simply can't see it with invisible light because there's too much stuff in the way for us to see it visually. So there's, there now you know that if you see this, this type of picture with the panoramic view of the galaxy, it's simply a whole bunch of pictures spliced together as you go all the way around in a 360 degree panoramic view of the galaxy. And just to give you another idea as to how large your galaxy is, let's assume that the galaxy here the galactic disk of the galaxy is the size of the United States. Well, if it's the size of the United States, then we go somewhere in the middle and we plop a quarter down on the street, somewhere on the road. Here's a small coin, a quarter. Our, our solar system out to, the, uh, out to the, um, the orbit of Neptune would fit on a 25 cent coin. So you take a coin about this big, that would represent our solar system, and then the size of the United States would then represent the rest of the galaxy. That one galaxy we live in, the Milky Way, is unbelievably large in size. And yes, there's billions upon billions of galaxies, some larger, many smaller, but all of them large with billions of stars in them throughout the entire universe. So it's almost impossible to imagine the size of our Milky Way galaxy, but that may be one way to think about it. Just think, we live on a small little coin in our solar system when the rest of the galaxy is as large as the United States. It's a good comparison, and that gives you a good idea of how large this Milky Way galaxy is. You said if you look at it 360 degrees, um, you scan on the horizon, mm -hmm. but when you look at, oh, and, uh, when you see the Milky Way in the dark sky, you actually look at the sky, and then all you could do is see 180, that's correct. When you look in the sky and look at the band of light that we call the Milky Way, you can only see a snippet of this. That's correct. So you can't see it all on the same moment, but if you let the night go by, you can see a different section of the Milky Way all the way through. So you take pictures throughout the night and you slowly get almost the entire panoramic view in a single night. So you can see the entire one in one night? 
You can if you do it in the winter time when the nights are very long. <laughs> probably better to go to the North Pole. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're at the North Pole and uh, in the winter time, that's probably a good place. I wouldn't want to be an astronomer stationed at the North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll put the graduate students there. <laughs> so what's that thing on the bottom? Those little bright, pretty lights. So that looks like a, um, a, ra a very strong radio source. This is in the infrared. I didn't look at the caption, so I'm not quite sure of it. It's probably looking at the core of a galaxy that's pretty active, so of an active galaxy. And there simply is another, uh, like a, a nebula that looks like a reflection region in the sky where blue light is reflected off of a nebula. So what's on the very bottom? Uh, you know... It's pretty. It is pretty. Um, not sure. Not sure what it is. Again, I would have to look at the captions. I didn't, didn't quite look at it. It's a little fuzzy, and I don't recognize it. I can try. I need to put my super-duper glasses on. And let's see here. Do they have it? Down below. A blaze of X-ray radiation left of center. Oh, Sagittarius A. Okay, so thank you for asking. So this is the region looking towards the center of our galaxy taking in X-ray radiation. So this, this is an X-ray source coming from the center of a galaxy. So because there is, a very, there is a, an accretion disk around the central black hole, the heat generated from the friction of all the material circling around the black hole generates so much heat that X-ray radiation will actually be coming from that region. So that's what this picture is about. So what's with the, like the single bright, single bright? I think that may be this blown up. I think that's a close-up view of the same thing. So this is... What about the other bright thingies, bright lights? Uh, below, left... Like the center. So this is a, as I was thinking, this is the radio image of the same region. So this is taken in the radio radiation, this is taken in X-ray radiation. Both come from the same region of the, of the galaxy, central region of the galaxy. Well, you see, uh, there's like three main bright spots. Those. Um, them, those are probably other X-ray sources near the center that are not coming from the black hole. So this probably is from the black hole. They're the same thing over there. And I don't know what these are. Mm -mm. Good questions. <laughs>